And even if I got to die, I'm still not going to turn back. Let's go. Can you admire this girl? When I look at verse 18, when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she cooled it. She stopped urging her. She's like, all right, you win. Come on, keep up. And off they went. Verse 19 says that the two women went on until they uh, came to, to Bethlehem. They arrived there in Bethlehem, and the whole town was stirred because of them. Uh, there was this big homecoming. I mean, Naomi went back to the place of her birth, and people said, hey, here comes Naomi. Hey, where's the limo? Like, where's the boy? Oh, Oh, they're not with you. Oh, they died. Oh, we didn't know. I'm so sorry. But it's great to see you. Here they came up to her. The women explained, exclaimed, can this be Naomi? Can this be sweetness? Is this her? She doesn't look like sweetness. Naomi turned to them and said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. You know what Mara means? Bitter. Call me bitterness. Sweetness has become bitterness because the Almighty, and here we go with the finger pointing again, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. She couldn't couldn't blame Elimelech for moving them over to Moab. Uh, She had to go after God, who was never behind that decision to begin with. See, I went away full, Naomi says, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord, again, wrongly she says this, the Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law. And they arrived in Bethlehem. And here we go with the turn in the story again. They arrived in Bethlehem when? Just as the barley harvest was beginning. When did they leave? During famine. They've made this decision, the two of them, Naomi begrudgingly, Ruth with her whole heart, to follow after God. And now they're back in the land, and what are, they, what are they coming into? What's the scene? Plenty. The harvest has come again. We're going to see that unfold in the weeks to come. But here's what I want to say to you before we go. When we come to the messes of our life, we have a choice. Everybody has a choice. Our kids wake up cranky. They come out. They're cranky long enough, and Eleanor finally uh, you know, gets, has enough with it. She always looks at the kid, and she says, listen, happiness is a choice. Go to your room and find it, right? <laughs> but everybody, when you, when you come to a bad day, a mess, the, the, the circumstances of life, you have a choice. Every one of us does. And we're all going to probably find ourselves represented in one of the people, in the midst of the mess. I forgot to tell you the first blanks. I hope you got them. In a broken world, life can be a hot mess. Isn't that true? But in the midst of the mess, in a broken world, life can be a hot mess. But in the midst of the mess, we all have to choose how we handle it. And I want to close just reminding you of the the way the people handled uh, the mess in this story. The first guy that we saw is this guy, Elimelech. Come on out, Elimelech. Good, he's there. Yeah, Elimelech, he was this guy who uh, basically, when faced with the, the mess that was the famine... He talked a good game. Remember his name meant, my God is king? His name meant, uh, I'm going to you know, make God king of my life. I'm going to follow after him. He's, he's the ruler of me. But when, when, when push came to shove, when, 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 the, when the rubber met the robe, road, Elimelech basically chose to do what he wants. And so many of us as Christians, can we just confess that we do that? I mean, we wear the t-shirts. We listen to the Christian radio station. We come to church on Sunday. We talk a great game. But when we get on the field, we do not perform. Because when push comes to shove, when things happen in our lives, we, as a first uh, matter of recourse, decide to take everything on ourselves. We pray prayers like this. God, I ask for your will to be done in accordance to what I want. Now, God, you know, I, I pray for your direction, and I pray it overlaps my direction. Uh, Lord, I pray that you can keep up with me because here I go. These, this is the heart of the prayers. And, and, and God may be trying to say, no, don't go. Don't go to Moab. No, stay here. No, I got you. The, the harvest is coming. Relax. What's that, Lord? Uh, I'm busy doing what I'm doing. I got a plan. 
You're, you're kind of fuzzy. Yeah, I don't hear you. Yeah, we could be like Elimelech. Now, did everybody see how that worked out? Elimelech formulated his plan for life, and what happened to him? Yeah, it doesn't work out too good, campers. We could be like Orpah. Orpah's a girl, but Randy's not. He's just going to represent her today. <laughs> we could be like Orpah, and when faced with the, you know, the decision to, to follow after God, we, we, we can like initially want to go do that. <laughs> but then after a while... He's doing it pretty well right now. After a while, we could get talked out of doing what God wants us to do. Have you ever been talked out of doing what you knew was the will of God? I mean, someone comes to you and says, nah, that's not going to work. Nah, listen, this is better now. That, you, know, you don't want to do that. And you're like, no, uh, I, I don't. And have you ever had that voice in your spirit come to you and say, God's not for you. He's against you. He doesn't even like you. And you're like, he doesn't even like me. Ugh. Talk to the hand. Yeah, we can do that. No, we don't have the story of Orpah, but we know that she went back to a nation that didn't worship God. We can basically kind of run that course and see that she didn't follow after God. And we know where that leads people, right? Not so good. But we could take a turn towards the good and, and act like Naomi. Come on out, Naomi. You know, Naomi, uh, again, it's, he's not Naomi. Anyway, uh, but Naomi was le at least on the right track. Can we all give Naomi, you know, kudos for being at least on the right track? I mean, Naomi was this girl uh, who was basically, uh, you know, at the point in life where she was going to, you know, uh, at least try to do what God wanted her to do. But you know how she's going to do it? Feet dragging. Bottom lip on her chin. Woe is me. She was an Eeyore, wasn't she? I mean... And we can all commend her. Listen, I, I, I need to say this about Naomi because she is kind of my hero and, she, and, and things turn out better for her in the book of Ruth. And she's my hero because at least she was honest. I, I, I have a hard time stomaching Christians who are going through a hard time and at least can't admit that. I mean, be honest about bad times. If you're having a bad day, go ahead and say, I'm having a bad day. Don't give me the whole, I'm too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. You know, and, and, uh, <laughs> and you know, quote all the sunshiny, happy stuff, whatever. Don't give me that. If it's not real, don't give me that stuff. Now, some people can honestly do that in the midst of the message. I think that's great, and that's where we're going to end up. But listen, if, if, if that's not you, be honest about it. Get the help you need. Don't, so many people die on the inside while they're looking happy and, you know, did anybody ask you how you were this morning? How you doing? And you looked at them, and you're like, hey, I'm great, brother. How are you? God is good, right? But on the inside, you know you just lost your job and you're about to lose your house. You're like, well, I don't want to bother him with that. Hey, we're the body of Christ. Go ahead, be honest. That, that's why we tell you to get in life groups so you got places where you can go and let this stuff out. People, people like walk away from God and faith all the time. Why? Because they think they're supposed to smile all the time. Some days it's, it's okay not to smile. Be honest about this. But listen, as soon as I get done saying that, understand that it's not okay to stay there. It's not okay to be so honest and authentic that you never feel like you have to change. We serve a God who's in control. Get over yourselves and let him be in control. I mean, that, that's, that's the call. That's what Naomi needs to figure out. She's going to eventually get there. But right now, it's like God's afflicted me. He's against me. Like, ah. And she lives this discouraged life. She's complying, but it ain't any fun. You know, listen, the messes can be fun. Did you know that? The messes can be fun. You, you could go through the messes of your life and learn so much. In fact, that's what they're there for. You could go through the messes of your life and see God's hand in so many ways that you could never see it before. But you have to be willing to look for it. You know, I picture Naomi trudging down this road to Bethlehem. She's not even excited about having something to eat. She's not even excited about seeing her family. All she can think of is the past and the brokenness of the past. You know the people who never get out of their depressions? They never get into their futures. Because they stay back there in the mess, and they never look to there where God's taken them. As followers of Christ, we don't walk backwards. Looking at all the things that happened in the past. We walk forwards. Look into all the things that he has for us in the future.